Can you imagine being George Lucas? Almost 50 years ago, you rock up, you make the most influential media franchise of all time against all odds, you revolutionize CGI a few decades later with the same franchise, and people are still expanding the universe that they grew up with half a century after you made it. I don't usually cover topics which are too personal to me, but Star Wars is a special topic. Like I'm sure many other people my age, A New Hope was literally the first movie I ever watched. I played a probably unhealthy amount of the original Battlefront back in the day on console, and in the deep, dark recesses of that game lie a trailer for an upcoming Star Wars game. It was long released by the time I'd seen this, but young me didn't know that yet. The trailer starts off creepy, showing these clones in cool armor slowly making their way through some dilapidated environments before picking up the pace and showcasing some of the more high-octane gameplay. By today's standards, this trailer is really nothing special. In fact, it's, it's quite amateurish. I could probably make something better than this. But as a nine-year-old, this absolutely floored me. That opening where you see the LucasArts logo and hear some quiet radio chatter sold me so so hard. This game is Republic Commando, one of my favorite games of all time. The trailer doesn't even focus on the best part of the game, the characters. The game is literally older than Episode 3, released in the beginning of 2005, and Scorch still says, no commands, or skills. The intro does a really good job of introducing all of the elements that you need to know. Your clone badass called 38 or boss. Here are your three besties in the entire world Delta 4 Hour Fixer, 62, Scorch, and 07, Sev. Now, with all that covered, go kick ass for the Republic. I feel uniquely qualified to discuss this game because I, believe it or not, took the time out of my day to step away from my computer, not for that long, I swear, and enter the cordium blasted hellscape that is real life to read the books. Karen Travis is the author of these books, and she did a really, really, really good job. These are some of my favorite books that I've ever read. She took a literal throwaway line of dialogue from the original game and used that to create another squad of Republic Commandos, make this super sick backstory for them which ties them to Mandalorian culture, and delved into the morals of a literal slave army bred for war like 15 years before Disney ever bothered to delve into the subject with Bad Batch. Speaking of which, that show is uniquely relevant, and I actually have no idea how YouTube's free use rules work, so just to be safe, this footage is going to be mirrored, flipped upside down, inverted, blurred, interpolated, and possibly a few other effects thrown on top. Scourge showed up in the first and second seasons of Bad Batch, doing pretty much nothing but being a cameo that made me lose it. I hope this counts as making my work sufficiently different from the original. Unfortunately, Scorch is voiced by Dee Bradley Baker like every other clone, and not Scorch's original unique voice actor. Someone important noted your excellence on Geonosis. You hear that, Sev? Someone thinks I'm excellent. Well, at least that makes two of you. In Battlefront 2, they let D voice the clones and Tamura voice Boba, so I don't think giving Delta Squad additional exceptions is entirely out of the question. All of the original voice actors are alive, by the way, so it's not totally impossible either. D is a fantastic voice actor, don't get me wrong, but it's hard to top the Delta's banter. Squad. Our presence is no longer a secret. Six two here. Keep alert. I think I've reached the coolant intake valve. Ah, uh, no, wait. It's an exhaust port. Six two, could you can the chatter until you've got something useful to say? Oh yeah. The actual game itself is pretty cool, too. The overarching plot isn't all that engaging because there isn't one. It's more a war story about your squad showcasing the different operations that they've gone on. You're in the dingy pits of Geonosis and an acclimator because the Republic wants you to, and that's all you need to know. I found pretty much all of the allied characters to be very memorable, namely the advisor clone, who has such a perfect voice for his role, and he sounds so reminiscent of Morrison. I will be issuing further orders as you go. Good luck, Commando. The other clones aren't as good, but they serve their purpose as forgettable cannon fodder. So you came to the torpedo bay to hide? No, sir. I was trying to uh, launch a torpedo and, and alert the Republic. But you're here now, so no need for that, eh? Look Thanks out. for the rest. <laughs> what a waste of good genes. Boss is voiced by Tamura Morrison, and God, do I love his performance. Squad! Poison gas! Secure helmets! Wait, poison gas? We just have that on the ship? Hold on. The Republic has poison gas in the detention block of a 
of oh. every ship. You have to understand that I was one of those kids who was obsessed over Boba Fett, and I mean, that okay, that hasn't necessarily changed. Getting to play as him made both 10-year-old me and 20-year-old me equally giddy. Oh, one of the deluxe models. Come to save us with your superior training. This deluxe model is the only thing standing between you and a bloody death. Shame his show was, uh... The, the, the way it was. I've played plenty of other games where the squad dynamic and tactics are advertised as a major selling point, but in reality, it doesn't really feel like that at all. Lots of the early 2010s shooter campaigns were like this. Republic Commando, on the other hand, I'm genuinely quite shocked to say holds up so good in this regard that it is still better than most games. Your team genuinely feels helpful and calming, and being stuck without them is actually very scary and genuinely disempowering. You get introduced to them one by one, with scores showing up to blow something up, fix or hacking something, and sev... um... Seving. Like I said, they are remarkably reliable as teammates, but there was that one time where Fixer shot an LAAT cannon up my ass, killing me instantly. Gameplay consists of you and your squad going through uncharted territory, ordering your squad to various tactical positions, killing and blowing up whatever's in your way, and throwing a lot of grenades. Despite the breadth of gameplay options being pretty small, it doesn't really overstay its welcome, as the game is pretty short, maybe only five or six hours long. It is ridiculously brutally hard though, which wasn't unusual for the time period, but it was a little bit of a shock going back. I was going to have an extensive section on game balance where I talk about how reliant the balance is on grenades, and how you can turn into a UGC Plat demo man, but then I realized I was writing an essay about the balance of an 18-year-old Star Wars game, and so I burnt it all. Wow, this is a piece of shit. Okay, I ain't doing this anymore. Give me my fucking shotgun back. They got this shit off Wish.com. I will say, though, that I like that the Super Battle Droids are depicted as these walking death machines. It puts into perspective how scary they'd be for the average clone. You can edgeguard the hell out of them, though. In general, this game absolutely nails the vibe and aesthetic of Star Wars. The set pieces with other clones feel grandiose and, dare I say, epic. And the score definitely sells it. Thanks for taking position. for the assistance, Captain. Glad to be of service, Delta Squad. No one steals a ship from the Republic while we're around. On that note, the music is actually hilarious. I know there are specific music triggers, but they feel completely randomly placed. Sometimes you'll just be walking around a corridor and suddenly... There was this part where Fixer was coming to save me after I had already dealt with a problem, and then he waltzes in with this epic choir. Bypass complete! Door opening! Great, I already solved the problem. <laughs> Thank god for the epic music. Thanks, Sir, Fixer. I got your back. Yeah, you sure fucking did. We should go back through the doors I just unlocked. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Fixer also revealed that this gun right here is chambered in ACP in Star Wars. This means that Colt is apparently canon in the Star Wars universe, and that leaves a non-zero chance that one day we could see Grogu with a 1911. This game focuses on my absolute favorite part of the Star Wars universe, the clone troopers. An army of identical individuals who are in themselves different from one another is literally one of the most limitless ideas for storytelling. It is simply a cherry on top that Karen Travis combined them with my second favorite part of the setting, Mandalorians. The way that she gave clones this quasi-Mandalorian warrior culture that was distinctly unique in its own right was so cool. Okay, sorry. I have to give some context for this. In those books, it's established that they took various warriors and shipped them off to Kamino to train the clone troopers. Each instructor imprinted upon their trainees a bit of themselves, and a few of the Mandalorian ones spread a war chant throughout the ranks, and occasionally before deployments, it'd be sang by clones to hype themselves up with an elaborate, complicated, and tenuous dance that involves clanking gauntlets on your brother's armor to go alongside it. When you hear Vodan, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, imagine it being sung by an entire division of clones, accompanied by the banging of plasteel against armor. It's a really cool image, and the way it was propagated makes perfect sense. It's details like these that make me so sad that the clones are reduced to nothing more than speaker boxes for Tamura Morrison in the mainline films. They're such interesting characters in their own right. 
It also makes me sad that Karen Travis got completely shafted by Disney. There's a reason the series never got finished. I was pretty... disappointed with Bad Batch as it really only gives character to a handful of clones that get screen time, and there are still an ungodly amount of cannon fodder clones which are brushed over without a thought. And I know that the deindividualization of clones- wow, I nailed that pronunciation- um, the deindividualization of clones is a main plot point in the show, but they're still treated by the cinematography and storytelling as nothing more than stormtroopers waiting to be shot. Well, I mean, I was disappointed because of that and also because the pacing of the show is all over the place with almost nothing happening ever. I'd love to see a TV show rendition of Delta Squad after Bad Batch is over next year, ideally with them not rebelling in the first episode, and I, I would- I would shit so hard if they announced a sequel or a remake of Republic Commando. I thought Respawn was working on it back when they announced that they were working on a Star Wars FPS, but I have serious doubts now. Thanks to all my patrons. You're all quite lovely people. Love you all, and good night. The way these droids are swarming, one might think we weren't welcome.